The USDA Southern SAIR program is interested in investing more of its grant funds in systems research and wants potential researchers to be able to learn from systems experts. Systems research links different components of the agri-food production and consumption system to generate a more holistic understanding. Systems can be very small, such as within the soil, but also very large, such as supply chains that link local production with global consumption. A more common view of systems is the livestock crop system associated with diversified farms. Systems include environmental, economic, and social dimensions, including business and government regulations. Systems research is more challenging than disciplinary research, and this video was made to help researchers be more successful in securing grant support for systems projects. This video highlights the work of four experts with different kinds of systems research experience. Charlie Jackson is director of Appalachia Sustainable Agriculture Project located in Western North Carolina. ASAP is a local food systems project designed to match local production to local consumption and thereby keep more people farming in the region. Dr. Vivian Allen at Texas Tech University has a long-term livestock forage systems project on the high plains of Texas, including the impact of irrigation on this system. Yeah, Anthony Flacavento is founder of Appalachia Sustainable Development and has worked on community development and food systems in central Appalachia for 25 years. Dr. Paul Mueller is with the Center for Environmental Farming Systems, a collaboration between North Carolina State University, North Carolina Agriculture and Technical State University, and the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. CEFS is a national model for partnership, innovation, and interdisciplinary cooperation in agri-food systems. The Southern Sayer Systems Educational Program is divided into five video modules, starting with this, Introduction and Meet the Exemplars video. The other four are Getting Started in Systems Research, Building a Systems Research Team, Overcoming Challenges and Obstacles, and funding and support. Together, this set of videos uses the advice and experiences of others to help you to be productive systems researchers and more successful grant writers. The Sayer team is confident that these videos will be useful for anyone wanting to be more engaged in adding to the body of knowledge of agri-food systems. So if that includes you, keep watching. Let us start now by introducing Charlie Jackson to you. Charlie Jackson is the leader of the Appalachian Sustainable Agriculture Project, located in Asheville, North Carolina. He was awarded a Sayer grant in 2007, which allowed him to formalize his interest in knowledge systems research. We selected Charlie for this video because of his interest and ability in producing practical results for his farmers through his systems research project. This is how he personally describes his work. So the system we wanted to look at was our local food system in the southern Appalachian region or western North Carolina. And what we were interested in is understanding how our farms could relocalize agriculture. Uh, we're in a region where farms were transitioning, particularly from burley tobacco, and so it was a, a period of flux and transition, and it was an opportune time to look at where are these farms gonna go? And so we wanted to look at what are people eating? What, what are they consuming in our region now? Where are they consuming it? What are our farmers growing? What can our farmers grow? And, and what is the desire to match those two, to match what people are eating up with what farmers can grow? That was our research that we wanted to look at in the context of our region. The goal of the project was to better understand the local food demand system. What we wanted to know was, what was the desire? How much did those folks really want to buy from locally, local farms? How much of what they bought could actually be, be produced on local farms? And so we really got and dove into the data and drilled down to see what was, it, what was a, um, a local restaurant or a local institution, a college, what was they, they were purchasing and of what they were purchasing, what could be produced by a farm in our region given our climate, uh, given our growing season. And so we pulled together the, the quantitative numbers, 
the amount that they were buying, uh, and then we combined it with this qualitative data of uh, what, what was the level of desire on the market, what was uh, an estimate of a real realistic growing season and climate that could actually be produced from our local farms and then and then that's the numbers we use and that's the that's the knowledge that we use when we're looking at potential for for markets for our farmers and it's based on what they can really produce uh, and, and what they're really buying and how much they want to buy it. Charlie is not your typical researcher. He brings a different background to his work but one appropriate to the kinds of systems work his clientele need. My background is in American history, and, and to me, American history is this wonderful background. It, it's by its nature interdisciplinary. It's, uh, it's big system thinking uh, for the most part, although there can be very much component type thinking and research that goes into history, but it's always in a context. And so I bring that to the work that I do. I bring a rich connection to the history and culture of the area that I'm working in, the context that I'm working in. Another systems expert is Dr. Vivian Allen. Dr. Allen became known for her systems research at Virginia Tech University and then moved to Texas Tech in 1995 where she continues to work in livestock and forage systems. She was awarded her first Sayer grant in 1997 working on sustainable crop livestock systems in the Texas High Plains. How big is the system and how do you identify the boundaries? Uh, a system can be almost any size you want to define. You can have very small systems, you can have very large systems. Uh, the boundaries, as I would identify them, would be the, the boundaries of the influence of the objectives that you're looking at. I think the best way to answer that is to give you an example. We work with a number of producers to look at different systems that they've designed and they are implementing on their own farms. And we had to go through this very question of how big and how, what are the boundaries. Some of the systems like a cotton monoculture, and that is a system, uh, don't need to be as big because they're not going to integrate as many different pieces. But the boundaries, if they're irrigated, are the boundaries of where the water pumped from that well is going to be distributed. She also focused on systems unique to the Texas High Plains. We have done research looking at irrigation levels, where we've gone from zero irrigation all the way up to 100% of, of uh, ET, or evapotranspiration, all the water that plant could use. And we've run that experiment. One of my former students ran this experiment uh, over several years. And then we discontinued that. This was not within the system. This was off-site. We discontinued that experiment. And three, four, five years later, we were still measuring the effects of the water treatments that he applied. Had I done that out here in this field, three, four, five years later, at least, I would have still been measuring that effect. Uh, there would have been differences in growth that could have affected the difference in animal performance of the cattle that are out here grazing. So you don't do things that can have long-term impacts that could affect what your primary objective is, and that's to understand how that system behaves. What is unique about Dr. Allen is the way she focuses her research on the needs of farmers in her area while publishing journal quality articles. When we first started our research here and started looking at integrating uh, a crop with livestock. Um, we were dealing with two monocultures that hadn't traditionally worked together. We've had long-term cropping systems out here where people and their, their parents and maybe even grandparents were involved in that crop monoculture. We had people who had been in the cattle business and that's all they did. And those two industries knew very little of each other. And so when we started to put these together into a system, we had to deal with, with a lot of attitudes and concerns and questions about, should we be doing this? Uh, why are we doing this? Uh, are you advocating that we not do this industry any longer or that industry any longer? And so there were a lot of attitudes that had to be uh, overcome. And we, we faced some very, very strong opinions on some of those things we faced the fact that some people didn't want to be part of what we were doing because they so strongly believed that uh, it needed to be different from the way we were approaching it from a systems approach. 
But over the years, I've seen that attitude soften enormously. I think partly because there's a growing recognition of the fact that we do gain by integrating the landscape and looking at different pieces, and partly by the fact that there's a greater understanding and tolerance now that, that we're getting very, very useful information out of this systems research that's benefiting all parts of the agricultural industry out here and benefiting the, the future of this region.